All right, we're all set. Excellent, thank you so much. So, hi everyone, welcome back to day four of the SUNY Online Summit. Uh, my name is Michelle Fort. I'm the project manager for student supports with SUNY Online. I'm also an associate professor at SUNY Empire State. And isn't this a great way to begin day four? Um, continuing our theme of hearing directly from our students. Um, we know that centralizing student voices is a huge priority for SUNY. It's certainly a priority for all of our um, panelists during the summit so far. And here we are again. Um, this time we're taking a look at the remote uh, student lens. So students who went remote, it's a little bit different than our first student panel on Tuesday, wherein we heard from students who chose to be online, right? And our SUNY online degrees at scale. Um, so I have some questions for them that we can use to frame out the panel. Um, and as we were saying before we started the recording, we really envision this as a conversation and an opportunity to ask questions. I've encouraged our panelists to be, you know, candid. And I think we can just really uh, have an opportunity to get some good information from them. So let's use our time together well. Um, so first to our panelists, uh, maybe uh, could each of you introduce yourselves? I could, you know, I'll call on you like a good teacher. Um, and you could tell us uh, your campus, what campus you attend, what's your major, and maybe uh, what year you're in, how long you've been um, a student at your campus. So I'll start with Natalie. You could unmute and introduce. Sure. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Natalie Sinembe. I am the Student Government Association President of Nassau Community College. I will be graduating with a liberal arts degree in math and science this semester, and my pronouns are she, her. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, I did this in alphabetical order. So Tim, would you like to go next, please? Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Tim Snyder. Um, I go to the State University of um, New York at Fredonia. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Um, and I will be graduating next fall um, with a major in ethnic and gender studies, psychology, and social work. So. Mm -hmm social worker. Okay. Xavier, next. Hi, my name is Xavier Rodriguez. Um, I am an RA in uh, Buffalo State College. Um, I am a senior. My major is uh, geology and I got a minor in astronomy and my pronouns are him, his. Great. Thank you so much, Xavier. And Elaine. Hi, everyone. My name is Elaine Van Valkenberg. I am a junior in the events management program at SUNY Delhi. Um, I am part of the MPI chapter at SUNY Delhi, Meetings Professional International. Um, I am also in the Honors Program and the Honor Society at SUNY Delhi. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have some questions prepared. And um, as I said, we just want to let our um, audience, really all of our participants, know a bit about your suggestions for faculty who teach the remote courses, right? And also, um, so we have individuals on the call who are course designers. So they help design and create the courses. They help faculty sort of think through how they want to present the material in um, a format other than face-to-face. -face. So we're hoping that you can um, help us think through some of those, um, some of those perspectives from your perspective. Um, so I guess I'll start with what, was your greatest challenge in the emergency shift to remote. So now we're sort of back, we're, we're a year ago, right? We're back um, in March of 2020, April of 2020. Um, and maybe I'll start with, um, Tim, if you wanted to start with that and we can just sort of go around and jump in. Yeah, sure. Um, so March of last year, um, I was actually living on campus. I no longer do. Um, and I was a, a RA like Xavier is now. Um, um, moving to online was pretty rough uh, for me personally. Um, I come from a low income background um, and I am completely independent. So when school got shut down and everything, there wasn't really a place for me to go. Um, so I ended up staying in the dorms. Um, but like, as I said, I come from a low income background so I didn't even own a laptop. Uh, so that was really hard for me because um, I didn't have access to the resources that I needed, right? I was using um, 
the university's uh, library for that public use of the um, computers and stuff like that. But obviously with the school being shut down, um, I no longer had access to that. Um, fortunately, I am grateful that um, I was in a position where um, I was able to get a computer um, with the funds uh, given to me by the school. Um, but as far as uh, classes went, um, it was very hard because I also work um, as well. Um, and I was still considered um, a central employee as a RA for the other students staying in campus or staying in the dorms. Um, and that demand became a lot greater with the, the pandemic and the, the rise in mental health and stuff like that. So I would say the biggest challenges for me was the financial resources um, um, because not a lot, of, a lot of universities think about that aspect of low income housing um, and uh, the demand of mental illness and stuff like that. So a lot of things packed into there, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Perfect way to start. Perfect. Um, Elaine, how about same question for you? What was the biggest challenge? Yeah, so I would say the biggest challenge that I um, I experienced was the adjustment as a whole because um, back in March, I was also living on campus. I wasn't an RA, but I was just living there. And it was just very confusing at first. Like I wasn't looking at the news. So I had no idea that COVID was even coming over here. And all of a sudden we got the email, like you can't have visitors on campus. And then it slowly shifted to um, if you had a lab, you have to stay on campus. But if you don't have a lab, you, you have to go home. And then um, it shifted to everyone has to go home um, and just talk to your professors and there was going to be a break. And um, from the break, it was going to be like a month long break. Like we would return to campus in April, but then all of a sudden it got pushed again and we were online and the teachers didn't have that much time to prepare for the semester. Obviously they only had a month, so um, I had the same issues. I had Wi-Fi issues. Um, it was just a big adjustment, I would say, because I'm used to in-person classes. So being online, it was just a huge adjustment. And it was a struggle, obviously, for everyone. But yeah, that would, I would say that was my biggest challenge. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, Xavier, do you want to take the same question? So um, it was real. Uh, it was tough. Um, so being an RA, we had to prep like for closing, and then we plus we had uh, all our classwork on top of that. Um, I'm a STEM major, so it's kind of hard to do labs online, and plus I'm that person that needs that like one-on-one -on -one help whenever he needs it, and plus I live, I live in Manhattan, so I'm going like eight hours back home, and also COVID was really big in the city, so now I had to make a decision, do, do I want to stay here, do I want to go home? So, but there was really no point on staying because uh, you know all the buildings were closed. So I was like, okay, now I got now I got to make a decision. So I decided to go home. You know, that's COVID was really really high there. Uh, I ended up catching it. Uh, with all my family members, um, like it was at a point where I started missing classes, and it was like really hard to understand because I was taking chemistry and I'm not really good at chemistry, and um, it's like it wasn't really good. At, it didn't keep me focused enough. It was like I can't do technology when it comes to school. Like I had to like be in class, I had to look at the teacher in the face. They gotta make eye contact with me. I gotta feel the presence for me to like keep myself focused. And Natalie, what was your um, challenge? So last spring I was taking a lot of STEM courses. So I took Gen Chem, Stats, Gen Bio. Um, and I am, I, I love those courses. There, there's no doubt that I'm very interested in those courses and the material, but the shift to online became a distraction since I live in a very cozy apartment, very tight apartment. So I'm currently in my room, but right next to me is the living room, which is split um, in between half of it is the living room, half of it's my brother's room. So, and I'm the most chatty one in, in the whole family. So, they always say that I'm like the loudest one and it becomes like this competition of who's louder because it's it's just we're trying to be on our own zoom calls and participate in class and then I'll have someone walk into my room and it'll be a distraction in that way since it's just everything's very close 
Um, and this distraction in the background definitely impacted my ability to learn because I'm definitely more like Xavier where I need that presence right there. Um, and it, it's, it's like whenever a professor performs, it's like a song and a dance where you're really connecting with the professor and really just, you're able to ask questions more easily. Sometimes in, in certain classes, it was super formal. So it was, of course there, there needed to be in a sort of order, but I would definitely feel that I had to save all my questions for the very end. So I wouldn't be interrupting the professor. And then that just ended up lagging and, and kind of snowballing in, in a certain way because I didn't want to be disrespectful, but I also really wanted my, to have my, my, I had questions too. So it was just the whole environment was just a lot to get used to apart from like the personal and being impacted by COVID because my mom works in the city. So she's constantly, she's an essential worker. So there's always that worry on the mind, um, but it was just very, very chaotic last spring. So that's the word, it's chaotic, right? It's distracting, it's chaotic. It was, <clears throat> it sounds like you weren't sure um, sort of what to do and where to go and right. And then you had to go home. Could you go home? You couldn't go home. And when you got home, there were distractions, <clears throat> excuse me. And it was difficult to maintain focus. And then there was reliance on the campus for sort of basic, right? Basic needs, basic framework. Yeah. Okay. Right. So Nassau has really excellent help centers and I would constantly be using those help centers for, especially for math and, and for chemistry. Um, and having like that period of time where everyone was shifting to figuring out what's the best way to help our students, that gap um, and not being able to do that, I fell behind. And I feel like that really impacted my learning. Um, and it was chaotic that I feel like that is the word to summarize last spring. Yeah, I think most of us on this call would agree too. Um, so, okay, so that's, this is really um, important information, right? To set a foundation for what you faced, where you were, your sort of your emotional, right? Behavioral response to this chaos. We'll keep using that word. Um, it's a great word. So now that the remote piece, right? The shift to remote is sort of, um, we'll say a new normal, we'll say a still normal, right? However we wanna say it. Um, what do you find your challenges now are? Are they the same? Are they different? Um, maybe Xavier, I could start with you for that question. Um, for me, it changed uh, a, a bit where it's like, um, I think like some professors understand where we, some of us are taking a lot of classes and how hard it is to manage all these classes at the same time, especially when it's online, when you know we don't have somebody in front of a classroom teaching us. Um, it's uh, it's it gets tricky because it, it is more lax. I'm gonna say, it is more lax where like you can set up your own schedule to do, take this class, but at the same time, it's like it mostly feels like I'm teaching myself sometimes. Right? That's it's, it's just just no man. Like when you when you're in the science and like in the science department, it's like yo, you gotta like help me with this because. I'm not gonna understand what the, the this equation is, you know? Tough. So there are people on this call who are gonna to want to go back to that idea of teaching yourself, but let's go around the panel and then we'll and then I will probably come back to that piece. I think it's I think it's an important piece to come to return to. Um, Elaine, how about you? What's your challenge now in this new normal? Yeah, um, so I would definitely say to start that the teachers obviously had all summer to prepare for last semester and now this is the new normal so we're all more comfortable like the um, the online databases that we're using to find all of our assignments they're more organized. So that's a good thing, but the challenges that I would find is that I I like the hands-on experience. I love the in-person classes where someone's explaining the concepts to me and I can just raise my hand if I have a question versus like emailing and waiting for a response. So that part is very difficult for me. Um, 
And I am not the only one in my household that is an online student. So I'm constantly battling with Wi-Fi. Like right now, there's someone else on a Zoom call and I'm surprised that the call hasn't cut out right now. But um, yeah, that is definitely a challenge for everyone, I would assume, Wi-Fi, technology issues. So um, yeah, that's one of my main challenges even right now. That's great, thank you. Yes, I agree. Uh, Wi-Fi is definitely the tech, the access, the technology. Tim, how about you? What are you? What's going on these days? Oh, um, so I, I definitely want to mimic what uh, Xavier was saying and Elaine um, on a couple of points. So I, I think um, it is hard, right? Um, for me personally, in my experiences that I've had, so like uh, teachers did have a lot of a lot more time than they did, you know. Uh, right after the pandemic started to, you know, create their courses. Um, and I feel like um, what I've experienced and what I've talked with, um, you know, other students at my school is a lot of teachers still aren't that organized. You know, they still don't know what what they're doing um, or, or the fact that they just, it just feels like they're very ill prepared, right? Um, the other thing is, um, like Elaine said, there's the, that 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 battle, you know, um, for Wi-Fi, especially with low income um, students that live off campus, like myself. I just had to push uh, my landlord to get us a higher uh, speed of internet um, because there's three people that live downstairs and two that live upstairs that are uh, sharing one modem. Um, and when you have five laptops, five phones, five iPads, or other things that you that we use, you know, um, on a daily basis, it becomes really, really hard. Um, and um, I, I like the idea of online learning. I think it's a great resource um, as maybe like, you know, especially during um, harsher winter times and stuff like that as alternative. Um, but um, I, I do hate that it is, it is becoming a new normal, right? There, there is some talk about, you know, keeping this around, right? You know, um, but then there comes into the aspect that like Xavier said, teaching yourself. Um, and me personally, I'm gonna be very blunt. If I'm paying thousands of dollars a semester to go to university um, and, and, and I know part of my money is going towards paying a professor to teach me something, um, I shouldn't be having to rely on YouTube videos, right, to teach myself, because I think that's, um, like I said, I'm going to be blunt because that's why I'm here. Um, that's unacceptable, right? Um, I think we are, uh, we, we pay a, a, a university thousands of dollars and I expect to get uh, what I paid for as a consumer, right, because we're, we're talking about this and most people um, within higher education do see it as that right a, a type of um, uh, commerce today today so I think um, as a customer I'm paying for something and I don't necessarily think that I'm getting it to the fullest extent that I could be getting it um, I will say in my experiences um, I do have a much more discussion-based uh, classes um, my, a lot of my stuff is more uh, read this, do this, and then we'll come back and discuss it. But like people like Xavier who um, do have those labs and stuff like that, um, you know, it's very hard to do over a line or other things that, um, you know, students need that in-person experience. And it's not even just about that. Um, I mean, when you're thinking about it from the aspect of uh, minority students, right, they have much harder times in school anyways, um, because of the other uh, challenges that they ha have to face from the outside world. Um, but you also have to think about it like, it's it's very hard for um, students in, in my opinion, and I think um, every, all the other students would agree. There's this idea that because it's an online class, we have way more time Right than we did when we, when it was an in person class. So uh, professors are giving us a lot a lot more work, um, and the workload is has definitely doubled because there is this idea that um, because the 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 class is online and then a student doesn't have to come into campus into a classroom that we still aren't don't have four or five or six other classes and work and social lives and stuff like that. Um, so those are a lot of. Uh, challenges that I see, not only with myself, but with other students. Sorry, that was a lot. <laughs> no, it's, it's, 
It really, when uh, if I if we invite you to be candid, we want candor. So thank you for that, Aaron. Mike, our colleague at um, System, echoed that in the chat as well. Please be candid. Um, I have seventeen thousand backup questions, and my dog, as usual, is coughing. Speaking of distractions, so if you see me going over here, going shush, I'm saying that to her, not to you. Natalie, would you mind taking that question, um, and then maybe we can like circle back and dig into some of this. Sure. So um, I definitely agree with what Tim was saying. I think that Khan Academy and the organic chemistry tutor were my best friend, um, specifically last semester. Um, I feel like I feel like last semester was definitely even harder than when we first shut down because there was that sense that this is our new normal. So it was get with the program or you're sinking, right? You're going to be doing poorly in your classes. And um, I, I, I genuinely felt that professors were tackling on more assignments to make sure that we were engaging and we were staying on top of our work, but it ended up being so much more stressful because I was already seeing that, like Tim was saying, that I am not learning the material the way that I am used to. And um, it, I was already struggling. And then to have even more work piled on, and since it was our new normal and um, professors were trying to find more ways to, to engage us, it was just so overwhelming. Um, I feel like sometimes when we, we use the word new normal, there's this sense of, um, I, I don't know if it's, it's, it kind of feels like it's, it's desensitized us to the surrounding factors that students are going through. Um, and I say that because I've had professors where when we're talking, it, it's kind of like everything is normal, right? Like there aren't students that their loved ones are dying and, and they're not dealing with all these other stressors. Um, but then there's other professors where they're very candid when they feel that there's tension in the classroom over Zoom. Um, and they see that we're like panic stricken by the deadline that's set for next Friday. And they're like, I see that you're panicking and I understand your frustration. So we're going to move the deadline. Um, so I've had both of those sides of that, but I definitely think that reaching this new normal, especially last semester, because of our sense of desensitizing all of this, it's made it even more harder. Um, for all the students, in my opinion. Okay, perfect. So now I want to sort of flip the script a little bit. We do have some questions in the chat. Um, and I think we want to look at based on your experience. So Dave, um, your question was the last one I saw. Um, love to hear our specific examples of how I can improve. So maybe as a bridge to that question, um, I wonder if you could tell us what is working well in your remote environments, right? Uh, so we could uh, maybe build on that, right? Or make some um, comparisons and connections between some of the struggles and you know, some of the barriers and what's working well. And Elaine, maybe I'll start with you for that question. Sure, yes. Um, so as I said before, now that this has become our new normal, um, the teachers are, adjusting as well and they're organizing the online databases as best as they can so that um, each individual student can learn the best that they can. Um, but for me, myself, I learn best by like isolating myself in my own environment um, to try to cut out those distractions because I am one to get very distracted easily too. Um, and one thing that I do at the beginning of each week, I go on to each of my classes and I write down and make lists of every single assignment that I have to do. Um, and I do their, and I write down their due dates and I highlight things and I organize it so that I don't miss a due date or I don't miss an assignment that comes up. And I do it every day just in case an assignment pops up on like a Wednesday versus a Monday or something like that. Um, and then I cross off each assignment as I do it because not only is it like a great satisfaction to just be able to cross something off, but it keeps myself organized. Um, in a way. And then I also check my email each and every day. Um, I have the app on my phone to make sure I don't miss an email, keep up with everything. Um, 
yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's great. Um, Xavier, how about you? What's, what was working well in your remote environments? Uh, so, I, so before I used to be a person that likes to work by himself. Um, but since we went remote, that's been hard for me. So I try to work with others, like that are doing the same work as I am. Um, one thing that I like that some professors actually do is like, I understand we have a syllabus, but this professor, when every time you go remote, um, she puts up what is due next week and what is due like a week from that from that from Tuesday, let's say. Um, she said take a take a picture because that won't that won't change. The problem with the syllabus is that um, uh, some assignments are due that day, but then when you go into class, they change it right then and there. So that's been a little confusing. Um, so yeah, I just I just like working with others because uh, all doing this online stuff is it's a uh, I get too distracted way too easily. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tim. How about you? What's what's going okay out there in remote land? Um. Yeah. Right. The, oh, great. I'm glad you said that. I would say not great, but okay. You know, things that are working. You know, semi sufficiently. Um. Like I said, I I I am in majors where I'm fortunate enough to. Uh, have discussion based classes where a lot of it is doing reading on your own and then coming back and you know talking with the classes so I think for me. Um, a lot of my classes are have not been um, as hard as they were in the beginning right uh, because a lot of mine is just coming in and 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 chatting with uh, students, I think uh, professors have gotten better. Um, at. Um, making sure that they are a little bit more organized. Some of us may feel like it is still di disorganized um, uh, to some extent. And I, I think uh, what, what else has been working well is, um, I think I, I would attest like because of this new normal, right? It is, it is making all of us um, um, more, more adaptable, right? it's a, it's also i think i think of it i want to think of it as also um a skill that i'm gaining as well is right we're all not b both uh teacher and student alike we are learning this adaptability to a new form of communication new form of learning new form of uh spreading knowledge um and just because it keeps popping up in the uh, um, in the chat i just wanted to uh put it in this um i think um a, another thing that has worked is uh, personally, in, in my school, there there is a rule about um, asynchronous and synchronous classes, and I think what has been working um, a little bit better now um, than it was uh, previously was the asynchronous of it. Right, it gives people a little bit more time to um, uh, take in the information and do things on their own. But at the same time, I also want to. Uh, mentioned that with the asynchronous also, also does come with what me and Xavier were talking about uh, is the the teaching yourself, you know, um, uh, instead of learning from a professor. Um, so there's that, but there, I'm not, don't get me long, wrong, there are a lot of things that have come out of this that are good, um, you know, um, so I, I, I don't want to take away from that aspect because that is the question. Um, I think uh, the biggest thing though is like uh, we are all le learning the skill of adaptability and I like you know, I think that's a huge part of life. So I would say that is one thing that is working very well um, is uh, we're all learning a new skill. Yes, and uh, if you are sort of looking at the chat, our um, colleague Kim uh, Scalzo said it's resilience, right? We're learning, I think all of us collectively are learning that adaptability, flexibility. So I'm gonna, um, which, you know, really is a life skill, isn't it? Um, and probably not one easily taught in a classroom. It's probably a collection of experiences. So this is great. Um, there are a bunch of questions in the chat. So I'm gonna go off of our, um, the list I shared with you prior to and maybe go through the chat. Let me see. Um, Michelle, there were a couple of questions that were similar in regards to wondering yep. from the students what type of um, yes. lectures they had. So if yes. you wanna do that. Yes, I, yes, the asynchronous versus synchronous. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So um, uh, maybe if the panelists could talk through that piece of it, let me see. 
Um, oh yes, can the panel distinguish whether they're referring to synchronous or asynchronous classes? Natalie, do you wanna take that one? Sure, so um, I, I take um, synchronous, my, uh, my my majority the majority of my classes are synchronous um but i do have one asynchronous class and i i took that class because there wasn't any other option for me for my schedule to take a synchronous class mm -hmm. um but out of all of my classes that's the one that i prefer the most um and the reason why is because even though um we're technically not meeting each other at all in any way, shape or form really, except for through email and through the discussion board posts. I think that the discussion board posts are very impactful um, because the way that our professor frames our questions, a lot of us, it's a political science class, so it's American politics. So a lot of us tend to bounce off of each other's ideas and we do end up having like threads that are like 52 comments when I go back onto Blackboard because of the way that he structures it. He has us um, look at different articles from the New York Times and then he attaches videos like TED Talks. Um, and then he also goes back to the textbook. So we look at different definitions of what everything means. So it's very holistic in the different amount of resources that we use. And because of that, we're able to have a full length conversation as if we were in person. Um, and the way that he structured that, I feel like I know the students and like I'll look for a certain student's name when I go to the discussion board post to see what they posted. Um, and I've had, I had a similar experience with a synchronous course. I took an English class last semester with Professor Scott Ash. I love that professor, him because the way that he had structured the class, um, it was we had to do reading assignments and then you had to post on the discussion board what your thoughts were about the text. And then you had to respond to another student. Um, and because of that, in the beginning, it was kind of like, I don't know what I'm really saying to this student, but because of us seeing each other um, twice a week, you ended up getting to know your classmates and you kind of had to talk to them and what ended up happening was that by the end of the semester, we were all friends and we still have a group chat till today where we all send things in. Um, so it ended up allowing us to have a real connection even off of campus. So I think discussion board posts are the way to go um, when it comes to engaging students. That's really great. No, that's really helpful. And it actually addresses a few of the other questions in the chat. Elaine, do you want to um, address that too, the synchronous versus asynchronous, what's working, et cetera? Yeah, so um, in the initial switch last March, all of my classes were um, asynchronous, obviously. They didn't really have time to set up Zooms. Um, last semester, all of my classes were also asynchronous. I didn't have any Zooms, any like meetings at all. Um, this semester, I take four classes and two of them, I do have Zooms once a week, which I do appreciate. In my opinion, I think that every teacher should be, they should be required to do one Zoom per class per week, just to either check in with the students, make sure they're good, or at least teach a, teach a lecture, like where they have a PowerPoint or something because I find that I learn best when there's a PowerPoint in front of me where I can take notes and the professor is talking over the lecture or something to explain it or like asking questions, et cetera, like that. Um, but a lot of what my professors are doing, like Natalie said, is they're doing the discussion boards a lot. I think all of my classes are doing that. And it I do like that because it promotes the discussion between the classmates. It, um, build a connection between them, like she said as well. Um, and I think um, the, the thing that I, I appreciate the most, um, one of my professors, she's actually my advisor. I love her, she's great. Um, I had her class last semester and she did exactly what I was saying. She posted a PowerPoint um, and she recorded herself lecturing over the PowerPoint to describe what was going on and like all the key concepts. Um, and then we also did a discussion board. We also had quizzes. We also had homeworks. I think that doing more than just the discussion board is a good um, way for all the students to learn because it promotes, um, how do I want to say this, like different 
like each student learns in a different way. Obviously, we established that. So having different forms of teaching the concepts to the students allows each student to be able to learn the concepts in a better way, if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> no, it does make sense. And I'm hearing some themes of um, humanizing, connecting. I'm picking up some threads in the chat. Natalie, you said two discussion board threads I find important. Student lounge and ask a professor. Is it for those reasons, for the connection sort of piece? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it allows the students like one space where they're just able to talk about whatever questions that they have and they can just pop a question and we're always getting the notifications because um, we're always on Blackboard. So it's a great way to just throw in your question out there if you're not necessarily connected to a student, like you don't have their email or um, you don't, you just don't have any of their contact information. It's a great place to just shoot out a question and it's not like terrifying in the sense that you're like not in a place where you're like, oh my God, I don't wanna interrupt uh, the Zoom lecture for this question that my professor probably went over um, at a previous time. Um, and it helps because sometimes um, in these group chats where students are in, we'll have conversations where we'll be like, oh, what did, did, did professor so-and-so say this? So it's just a place where you can grow a community by asking important questions and being able to comment on things that you that you like during class. And I think that they were very important. That's great, thank you. Um, uh, Tim or Xavier, did you wanna to add to this piece? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was gonna say, um, I was typing in the chat, but I'll say right here. Um, I definitely agree with Elaine, right? Um, I I have a lot of um, classes now where we meet once a week for Zoom. Um, I think that's a, a super important thing. I, I think having at least one Zoom uh, call a week is better than, um, so last semester during the pandemic, I would go a week without like seeing a professor, and then the the the, the week after is then when I would meet in meet in Zoom with that professor. And I think that was just too much time in between that time frame to speak and see a professor and talk about the 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 ideas and situations that were going on like with the material. Um, I think two weeks was way too much. I think. Um, it, there should be at least one Zoom call a week, right? Um, if not more, um, depending on the professor. I know I have um, two classes this semester that are um, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, right? So it, it, it's every every day that it's supposed to meet, we meet on Zoom. But there 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 are some classes where it's like, okay, we only meet on Monday. And then on Wednesday and Friday, you use that time to work on things for class. And then we meet them the following Monday. So I think there should be that um, um, th that synchronous, right, once a week. But then um, the asynchronous, I think that part of it, uh, discussion, discussion posts, I think, have become very helpful, right, because uh, not necessarily everybody is um, able to um, articulate everything right away, right off the top of their head in a class. And so I think that gives a, a awesome alternative for a lot of students who are definitely not as outspoken as uh, Xavier, Natalie, Elaine, or myself are, at, you know, and uh, willing to do something like this where we're talking to, um, what is it, 135, 30-something people. Um, so uh, discussion posts definitely do give that alternative. Um, I I know um, uh, for my, um, so one of my classes, like I said, we meet um, on Mondays, we have to do a discussion post by Wednesday and a discussion post by Friday. And there's like 50 people in my class. So that's a lot of posts for uh, uh, professors to do. So I respect that, that work ethic as well. So I think there are some, um, super good perks to both sides of the synchronous and asynchronous a part of it. Um, but yeah, uh, discussion posts, yeah, keep it up. <laughs> um, you know, because it also allows, you know, for students to, um, um, like I said, articulate, but then for other students to go and look at that and, and maybe uh, change how they were thinking or adding something to the thought that they already had. So um, I, I do like that aspect because you are, um, 
learning off of each other. Like Xavier said, right? We're, 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 we're leaning on each other now, right? During this pandemic uh, to help each other out uh, because there is some sense at some times, which is not always um, the intention of the professor, but there is, there's a little bit of a lack of that support. So we have to lean on um, other students to get us through. So I think that's super important, but yeah. Um, that's all I have to say, because I see there's a lot going on, so. <laughs> there's always a lot going on. I knew there'd be a lot going on. I want to, um, there's a question in the chat I wanted to get to, and then we want to talk about teaching yourself. There's so many things we want to talk about. Natalie, you said something about having a dance with, a prof with faculty members. Some of us went, wait, what, dance? I think I know what you mean. Um, oh, but, yeah, yeah, I just meant the, the, the way that the professor performs. Interact. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yep. Yes, yes. And I think that, you know, we miss that too, right? You know, some of us, we miss that too. But, but, you're, but what I like about this um, piece is that you're really helping us understand how that piece can be um, uh, organized and humanized, right? Even, even in the remote um, uh, environment. And uh, I love the 52 post discussion threads because like you can think about something and go back to it. Right, we do that, don't we? Like, leave a classroom and go. Oh, wait a second, I should have said something. Well, your discussion is still there, and you can add to that. So that's really, that's really great. Thank you for adding that, Chelsea. Um, I'll just read. Do you, I can just read your question for you. Um, have campus resources reached out uh, to you, or have I guess have you reached? You know, have you reached out to campus resources? Um, so you mentioned using tutoring in the library. And then do you have access to those online? Um, so uh, let's see, Xavier, do you want to um, speak to that? Um, I personally haven't like gotten any like emails about them, but uh, uh, that's, that's actually a good question because I actually never got an email about like tutoring and all that stuff. We might have, but uh, and, and so, again, sounds like these, like I'm not gonna go out you know, during COVID to, to find a tutor when I can just talk to my friends and they can help me out and understand the, the, the topic. Um, also, like us, as, as like me as an RA, uh, I get asked questions, like people need help with homework, like I say, like a, a, a computer information system. I'm just like, like, I'm, like I took it one time my freshman year, but like, you know, this is coming, this is coming from fresh from freshmen that, that need help with, with their work. And it's like, like, I'm sorry, like, you know, just uh, make sure you're always reading. And I feel bad for them. It's like, are they, aren't they teaching you this stuff, you know? Um, I tried to tell them, like, oh, this, I'm sure there's tutoring somewhere. But the fact that they're asking me, I'm guessing not. Uh, that's something definitely that teach up the, the campus should definitely always, like, keep pushing. It's tutoring and tutoring and tutoring. Because that's, like, a, a, like, I promise you, like, we need that, like, badly. Because it's, it's just really tough when it comes to, to keeping everything online. Yeah, Elaine, how about you? Have you availed yourself? Yeah, so my school does this thing called Delhi Today. I don't know if all schools do it, but it's called Delhi Today. It's like a, a, a news thing that I, I, I don't know, for lack of better words. Um, so each day, um, someone from the campus, I'm, I don't even know who does it, but they send out an email to everyone on campus and it um, heavily explains like the resources that students have, um, even being, even if you're not on campus, they do say, they mentioned like the tutoring services, health services. Um, if you are going to campus, like what you have to do in order to um, maintain safety uh, going on campus and not bringing COVID obviously. Um, yeah, and I also get many emails with like surveys um, asking about things. Yeah, I would definitely say that I have access and I know where to go if I have um, questions or problems with anything like tutoring and stuff like that. That's really great. Uh, Na Natalie, is, how about for you? So I love the help centers at NASA. Um, I actually went yesterday for the writing center. So the way that they have it is it's a Zoom appointment. And um, the professor that I always go to, it's the same one, it's Professor Powell. And she helps me with all of my English papers, my applications for schools. It's just a great place um, for me. And I, I used it um, 
when I was on campus, I used that same service and the shift to remote definitely put a panic in me because I wasn't sure if there would be that same support system. Um, I also used the math help center. I would go constantly. That's actually something that I bring up all the time to everyone who listens to me um, because there's no way that I could have passed Calc 2 without um, the help center. Um, I would go multiple times a day multiple times a week. I think that they got to know me very, very well. Um, and I wouldn't have had access to the Math Help Center as much as I would um, currently. I feel that because of Zoom, it's definitely allowed for a lot more accessibility, right? I could just drop in. I don't have to commute. Um, so that's a big game changer for remote. And I think that that's why remote will stick around because it's so accessible. So that's a really interesting and positive thing, isn't it? Like, I just want to sort of notice that out loud because prior to this little, what are we calling it now? Pandemonium, pandemic, panda, panda bear. Um, you know, the campus was the campus, right? And we went to the buildings and we did the thing. But it sounds like in answering this question, you all are discovering in some ways, right, different ways to access your campus. And the campus is surfacing, spotlighting, um, trying to connect you, right, with, with resources that in a face-to-face -face environment, we might just go, well, you know where the building is, it's over there, right? The tutoring center is over there, right, we sort of point. So um, that's a very interesting um, way of getting to know your campus. Uh, and for the campus to highlight its supports to you. And, and it remained there, Natalie, right? To your point, like you thought, oh no, I can't do this remote, right? And, and there it is. So even if, you, if when we go back to face-to-face, -to -face, maybe you'd still avail yourself of that opportunity, whereas before you might not have. That's great. Uh, Tim, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to answer that question too. Are you... Um, using any of the supports on your campus? Yeah, so um, I would say as far as tutoring, um, it is a huge thing on my campus. Um, uh, uh, all of our tutors go through um, a very strict like screening process um, before they can be uh, eligible to become tutors. I used to be one. Um, but for me personally, I've never used it because like I said, um, a lot of my classes are very discussion based and um, um, about, you know, theories of gender and uh, um, uh, um, ethnic uh, studies and stuff like that, it, which is uh, not necessarily things that you can um, uh, tutor someone on. Um, but uh, as far as tutoring, um, it, it's a huge thing on my campus. Um, I would actually, uh, there are a lot of other resources at uh, my campus uh, that like are probably some un unsung heroes. Like a lot of people use them, but they don't get recognized as often as they should. Um, like for example, today I have a meeting um, in, in about an hour and a half for um, uh, my graduate, uh, my grad school search, right? You know, um, with the Career Development Center, um, there are some amazing. Um, uh, 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 the other thing at our school is we're taking mental health very seriously. So we, uh, so uh, mental health centers have uh, uh, have expanded on our campus as well. So I think there are a lot of resources that, um, because of the pandemic, rate right, has shown what students are really utilizing and what they aren't and uh, what they aren't, how can we make that more accessible so they are. Um, and so I would agree with you, Michelle, because there are things, you know, um, before the pandemic, people would be like, oh, um, the counseling center is over in the house, uh, the health building, you know, uh, you know, go at your own risk. Whereas, um, you know, a lot of students and I and I experienced this as an RA is that like a lot of students don't want to have that stigmatization around them, if that's a word, I think so, um, around them, uh, right, about going to, um, you know, other students seeing them go to a health center, right, oh, what's wrong with them? Um, I think I agree with Natalie on this point that um, uh, things like that have been more accessible in the way that you can drop in on a Zoom chat and be like, I'm having a hard day, can I just talk, right? Um, 
so I think those are amazing things, right? And, and then um, what if, what if, uh, you know, there you you can't go during in those drop-in hours. There are there is that um, ability to. Um, you know, set up appointments, which um, I will say a lot of professors have been way more flexible with than, than they have in the past. Um, um, I know uh, the, the faculty and um, professors at my, my um, university uh, were required to have uh, two, hour, uh, two office hours a week. Uh, that has tripled, right? Um, a lot of my um, faculty members are having like four or five a week or by appointment, right? And I and I think my, some of that might be because of you know the tr tr uh, transition to online cl uh, classes, so they don't have as busy of a schedule. But I think it also does work. Um, so I do want to say like online uh, remote learning has be. Uh, I think it's something that should stay, right? Um, uh, because there are some people that prefer this um, as to you know. Um, in-person classes, uh, you know, because there are a lot of um, online universities now, right? A lot of that's happening um, via remote. And I think that is a great uh, tool that a lot of universities that haven't explored before can now. Um, I think that um, it's also a great tool to have, like I, like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, we are in, um, I'm in Western New York, I get hit with snow constantly, right? Um, so I think it is alter a, a huge uh, alternative, um, a good alternative for you know those days when when the governor's like, hey, you're not going to school, right? Um, uh, you know, okay. So the professor's like, okay, we're going to meet on class today. But you also have to think about it from that standpoint. Uh, professors have to be able to have that adaptability and be like, okay, this is the alternative plan for today. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I, there are a lot of resources on my campus, um, and like Elaine, they are widely, wide, widely published. I think I get my, I know my phone's like buzzed like 18 times, um, about, you know, different resources that are constantly on our campus. So I think that's a, a huge thing too. That's really great. And actually you sort of bridged into some watching the time. I always, I never end these things on time because we chat, but let's do one more question and to you, and you sort of, you started talking about it. So maybe we could, we could end on this idea of, um, of office hours. Natalie, it looks like you answered it in chat, right? That zoom, the zoom office hours thing, you love it. It's made it more accessible. Um, Elaine, is that your experience as well? Have you done any of that? Yeah. Like Tim said, um, I think they were required to meet or um, before online, the professors were required to have like two a week or something, but now most of my classes have it like five days a week. And before online, I was the type of student that would like constantly go to all of my professors office hours with like the littlest problem on like a homework because I need to, I need to have that question answered. Um, so even now with online, I'm constantly utilizing the, the office hours. Um, like I said, they have them five days a week. It's very accessible. Um, and they're even, even well, sorry. <laughs> they are um, responding to emails a lot faster than they were originally back in March or even last semester. So if I can't go during their office, office hours on one day, I can simply email them, schedule another appointment for later that day. And they're very, very understanding. They're very accessible. Yeah, I love our office hours. I love how you can go at any time. You can constantly um, communicate with the professors. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. And we have a request for an ending question, which I think is a great question. Um, so what do you hope continues from this experience once you're all back on campus full time? I think we've started to address some of that, but maybe one thing that you hope continues. And Xavier, I'll start with you. Uh, one thing that I hope continues when we go back to, uh, to full-time in person, it's uh, support. Uh, just never stop supporting us, please. Cause I promise you like, I may, I may smile, I have the biggest smile on campus, but I promise you deep down, man, I'm crushed. Like it, it, it's tough, just keep supporting us. Please understand where we're coming from. Let me tell you something, don't just hound us. Remember like we're coming here to, 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 to have a, a better life once we're, out, once we're out of college. 
um, this is in high school. I, I know, I know, y'all know that, but uh, just uh, keep supporting us, man, because the world is tough, man. <laughs> Indeed. Elaine, how about you? Um, I would also say that I hope the support um, continues and the communication and the understanding that sometimes a global pandemic hits and we have to be able to adjust and adapt and um, like we can't just put a pause on our education. So if this were to happen again, we just have to be understanding and moving forward um, in person, just keep the communication up. And because like I said before, I believe that now that we're online, there's more communication outside of the classroom, obviously, since we're not like in the classroom, but um, even once we do go back to a classroom, I hope that emails are still being sent out um, for information more than they were before COVID hit. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Thank you so much. And Tim, what's your one takeaway? Yeah, so um, my one takeaway, um, it's a couple things. So one, support. I agree with um, Elaine and Xavier, and I'm sure Natalie will probably say the same thing. Um, but uh, sensitivity. Um, I think there uh, that the pandemic has shown, uh, has, I would say, softened a lot of professors that are usually very tough. Um, and I don't think it should have taken a pandemic to do that, right? Um, like Xavier said, the world is tough, right? There is a lot of things happening to us that um, are happening to pr professors too, right? They have lives outside of the classroom, uh, just as we do. And I think a lot of professors uh, don't necessarily realize that. Um, so th I would say keep, keep the sensitivity. Um, one other thing, um, because it keeps getting asked in the, the thing, uh, one thing you wish your professor would do slash or would not do in their instruction. Um, um, I, I would say, ask the students what they want as to what you prefer to do, right? Because it's not, it is about you, but it's not. It, it's about teaching, uh, you know, it's about teaching a, a classroom. So that would be a, a thinking about what other students want and not you. Um, and I will end it at this. Um, I'm putting my email in the chat. If you have any questions, email me all of your questions and I will be happy to respond to them. I have nothing to do today. So um, I will be on my email all day long. <laughs> and that, that I will end on that. <laughs> That's great, I end with an email. And Natalie, could we wrap up with you please? What's your one takeaway? Sure, my one takeaway, well, Tim really covered all the bases, didn't he? Um, but I do think that going back to campus, I really hope that, at, I hope that Nassau continues to have these remote help centers um, because I, and I commute to Nassau. So Nassau is a commuter school because we're a community college, we're a commuter. And I take maybe two hours to get there. So there are some times where I would much rather just stay home and I'll like push it all to one day and be like, you know what, I have to all get this done on one day when I go to campus and that's it. Um, so I hope that we do use the remote element to help our students and in a way that we're making sure that everything is accessible because Nassau is a, we're a, mel a melting pot, right? Because we have a lot of minority students and a lot of our students commute as well. And we have a lot of first generation students too. So I think that if I would be more than happy to see Nassau remain as accessible as it is right now in COVID and if anything to grow um, because there's always room to grow. And I think that that's where Tim was touching upon um, in we should be having conversations of what a student is really going through. We should be having those connections um, and, and seeking them. And I think that that's where the office hours are so important, especially these Zoom office hours, because I can request an appointment and at the comfort of my own home. And because I'm in the comfort of my own home, we do end up broaching topics where I can really explain that my family life is, is hectic and it's chaotic. And I, even though I, I would love to um, talk to that in like a normal, office on campus, it's not easy. 
to broach those subjects. And I think that remote has made everyone a little bit more accessible and a little bit more sensitive in the way that Tim was implying. Um, and that's where I have, and that's what I have to say. No, I think that's, that's actually a great place to end because we sort of brought it full circle. Alex, I know we're over, you know, we're, we're over. Um, but uh, we started out asking about the challenges, right? And a lot of the challenges were the campus is gone, the supports are gone, blah, you know, and so on, right? And then we sort of brought it back to, but here are all the ways that remote informs accessibility. Here are the ways that maybe being in my house and not being in an office, right, where it's sort of sterile, maybe, you know, despite our best efforts to decorate, um, uh, maybe maybe that informs a different kind of candor, right, or a different kind of conversation. Um, so I think that you've, what I really appreciate about the panel is the balance between here are the challenges and here are some things we hope remain in place because we see these supports, we see the access, we see the um, fluidity, the humanization, the, um, the realization about courses, course content, and so forth. So um, really, thank you. I mean, you see all the thank yous in the chat. Thank you from me as your facilitator. You made this job very easy. Um, Alex, can I turn it to you? Three minutes late, sorry. Yeah, no, um, it's fine. Um... Uh, Michelle, no worries. Just want to reiterate what everybody is um, saying and feeling um, to Elaine, Xavier, Natalie, and Tim. Uh, thank you so much for uh, participating in the panel and helping us to see your reality through your eyes. Uh, it's so valuable and, and such a, your honesty and your candor is so appreciated um, to help us really understand things um, uh, and to be better for you. We're, we're all in this together. Really appreciate you and your comments and you, Michelle, for, uh, for facilitating. Thanks to everyone um, who attended and um, I hope this is a wonderful kickoff to day four of the summit. I, I, there's so much to think about and, and so much um, work to be done. I feel very inspired um, and we're looking forward to the rest of the day. Coming up next, I put it in the chat, but we're having an open networking panel for online and remote faculty next. And so I hope you'll stick around. Um, we're starting it up. Um, well, you know, I'm not leaving, so we can, <laughs> we can go whenever, but it's supposed to start at 10 15. Thanks to the students for sharing your email addresses like that's extraordinary to me that you're willing to continue to engage and um, and carry this conversation forward really extraordinary group of people I just want to say thank you from all of us thank you I agree thank you so much I just want to